Hello, been a minute since I did a review video, but I'm uh, very excited to show you this drone that I bought. As you, uh, if you, if you follow my channel, I don't have too many drone videos, but uh, if you follow my channel, you can see that I did get into the hobby uh, about three or four years ago. And I've lost a few drones, trial and error. I started cheap. Um, I think I started with the SEMA X5 on eBay for like 40 bucks or something. And just kept moving up. I wanted to buy a DJI and of course if I uh, wanted to spend the money I would have one by now but I just, uh, right now I just can't justify spending $1400 on a new Phantom 4 Pro or a Mavic Pro. And I know I can get on eBay and get uh, a Phantom 3 for a reasonably low price but I like trying all these new things. I like uh, seeing the different ones that are out there as well for uh, a fraction of the cost. And I think I finally found one that can do everything that I want. Um, for a very, very, very good price. This is the ADE AP-11 drone. It has a, a bunch of features that just all work incredibly well. I've had it for a couple weeks and I've flown it about 20 times or so now and I finally get it to the point where I can put it up extremely high and have confidence that I'm not gonna have any issues with it. All with the uh, live video transmission. It does come with a uh, Wi-Fi repeater, which works really well. Um, my tip to you if you buy one of these is first the camera, which I don't have hooked up right now, but the camera that uh, clips on here is a Wi-Fi high def camera, action camera. It's the stock camera that comes with it. it takes really good photos, uh, up to 16 megapixel. And of course, like I said, 1080p video. Um, very, very crisp, clear video for, for a stock camera that comes with it. You can also attach a GoPro. There's different cameras that you can put in here as well. But um, so far, I'm just gonna stick with the one that comes with it. Uh, but back back to this the tip I want to give if you get one of these um, When you pair your Wi-Fi repeater to your camera when it's hooked up here Easiest way I've found when using the app for um, first-person view while you're flying is you switch on the repeater you Wait a, wait about a minute turn on your camera and then um, wait another minute turn on your Wi-Fi on your camera by then your phone will be connected to the repeater first fully and then the repeater will then connect to the camera and that seems to give me more of a stable connection because at first I was losing signal a lot faster and I think the phone was trying to switch over to the uh, camera Wi-Fi instead of the Wi-Fi repeater but if I make sure that my phone's fully connected to this and this is fully powered up first it um, I was flying 700 feet today and I had zero issue of, um, with any delay, no crashes, the app ran just fine. And before I had issues, when I turned everything on at once, I think my phone was connecting to the camera first. And I think I think this is just a good tip for anyone that has one of these or is looking to get one. But uh, further on, the GPS uh, that it has equipped with it does very well. On the control, you can see the GPS in normal mode. NRM is normal. When you first start off, wait for the GPS to lock. There's a light on the back that is that will flash green. This light will flash for, I don't know, about 20 seconds or 30 seconds until it finds its GPS and everything's powered on. Once that light turns solid green on the back, the GPS button or light right here will also uh, stop flashing and be solid green. Once that's solid green, you're ready to fly and you know you have good GPS. Um, you could always take off in normal mode if you switch. Like let's say you lock it on GPS first before you even take off. You take off, you're flying around, and then you flip it in normal mode. That's fine. It won't kill your GPS signal. It'll it, This will still remain green. You just will have full control of it, and it's not going to hover where it's at. And it's not going to re um, return home until you have GPS flipped on. And then it's instantly, it'll, it'll just stop right where it's at and hover and hold its altitude and everything. Very heavy uh, drone. Uh, very stout. Feels like it's made very... Uh, very well. It's about four pounds with the uh, battery, which is a 6,800 milliamp battery. Um, manual says you can get 25 minutes of flight time. I actually flew it for 28 minutes today and still had uh, still had some battery left to play around a little lower on the ground. But uh, very impressed with the battery. I mean, for, for the price, you can get these for a couple hundred bucks. They have the AP-11, which is listed for $6.99 and it does have the uh, follow me and you can wear a wristband and have it follow you. A few other features, but by the time you spend that much money, uh, you might as well get a DJI. This for a couple hundred dollars, I, I don't see how you could go wrong. The uh, gimbal works very, very flawlessly and smooth. You could control it with the remote. 
with the uh, camera pan uh, tilt button or uh, toggle switch, but while you're flying, you can slowly bring the camera down, bring it back up. And when the uh, drone, especially in a windy day, if it's tilting back and forth, the gimbal will remain horizontal. The motors will will move it to keep it uh, level with the horizon. That way you have smoother video. And if you turn abruptly, like if you turn uh, real fast like this, the uh, camera will also correct itself by a motor that will soften the turn. So if you turn left, it'll it'll slowly level back up with the drone like that. Um, the camera's not on there. I have it plugged into the computer right now. I'm uploading some uh, video I put together flying around uh, town here, which I'm gonna post. Uh, I'll probably actually have that posted before I even post this video. But the camera is just a little action camera that came with it. Um, you can also have it set to record just a full entire flight um, before you even put it on the drone and then not even use Wi-Fi. But I like using the uh, first person view with the Wi-Fi repeater. Gives a cool view. It could also be uh, useful for like roof inspections or anything where you're trying to see live video without having to wait to bring it down and then review it on a computer. Um, when you view the video on your phone, when it's clipped on here, you can clip your phone on here while you're viewing it. You can uh, see that there's some distortion a little bit. It doesn't seem like it's full high def. Um, however, when it's recording, as soon as you select record on the app, it, it's recording high def or 1080p high definition onto the, your uh, SD card in the camera. So it may look kind of low quality while you're viewing it. Uh, still not bad, but when you view it on a computer, it'll be a lot better. Um, no delay, no choppiness, nothing like that. Although, uh, it's not a DJI, it still just has very impressive features for the price. An actual physical switch instead of a button you have to long press or anything like that to turn it on and off. Battery's charging right now, but it's a big battery that fills this entire space. There's, I can put my whole hand in there pretty much. Like I said, it's a 6800 milliamp battery. And I clearly got 28 minutes of flight time with it and still wasn't dead. Higher the wind, higher the uh, speed, higher the altitude climb, the battery uh, usage, or the battery life may uh, vary. But if you're just doing some light hovering, or if you're doing some, wanna do like a cool shot for real estate to try to sell a house or anything like that, that it's not gonna use nearly as much battery just for little things like that. Um, very impressed though. I uh, would like to show you how it flies from the ground, but uh, it's only me. I don't have anyone else to hold the camera. It's pretty simple. There's uh, certain calibration tips you'll have to do when you get it out of the box. Uh, for the GPS, the accelerometer, and the um, gyroscope. There are uh, pretty simple instructions that are in the box. However, I found it easier to just watch a couple videos on how to do it so you can physically see it in person. It seems a little easier that way. But either way, the, uh, G the calibrations work great. If I put that controller in GPS mode while I was hovering, even in uh, yesterday I had 20 mile an hour winds I was flying in and it was just holding perfectly. And if there was a gust that kind of knocked it back a little bit, it would correct itself and go right back to that position. A um, couple other cool features with this drone. On the top of the controller, you'll see that it has a little home with an arrow. That's the return to home, which I'll go over in a second. And then this little hook, which I thought was neat. And I'll go over that in a second. So the return to home, I uh, tested it today for the first time. When I flew it out of my house about... I don't know, sometime last week, pretty much uh, right after I got it and got everything going on it. I tried to return to home, but I have a lot of trees and out back is even worse. But I tried to uh, have it go to return to home and it started climbing really fast. I thought maybe something wasn't working right. However, like uh, any normal person should, I actually read the directions afterwards and it said that the uh, drone will climb to 82 feet prior to returning to home. And I think that's to clear any obstacles that might be in its way. Um, so it doesn't uh, return to home and hit a tree or a person or uh, telephone wires or anything like that. So I got into an open space today, tried to return to home. It was per precise, it, exactly where it took off from it landed. It climbed up to 82 feet, found its position, slowly moved above to where it took off from. And I was about probably a thousand feet away from at the time from where it took off from. So it did a really good job and it landed exactly 
I mean, probably within an inch of where it took off from. So worked very well. Just uh, bear in mind that uh, if you're in a highly dense area with trees, wires, things like that, be cautious while you're doing return to home because it will, uh, you run the risk of it hitting a telephone wire or something like that, or if you have kids running around. Um, with that being said, if it's in return to home uh, function, it'll be in, G you'll have your GPS already flipped up. Um, you can, let's say something happens where you have to exit return to home because you have no controls over it while it's returning to home. You can put that down right in normal mode and that'll uh, exit return to home and you'll have full control. And then um, let's say you wanna go back into GPS and you just flip it right back up to GPS and it'll hover and then you can start over again if you need to. So this other feature, this little hook, I thought it was pretty cool. It didn't come with the accessory, but apparently you can buy it. It's a little uh, hook to where you can retract and pick things up. Um, and when you press that button, I guess it pulls the, uh, whatever you're wanting to pick up, it'll pull it up and you can actually transport items with this, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, probably goes back to uh, what people were doing at the prisons where they're dropping cigarettes and other uh, goodies behind the uh, walls at the prisons. Um, but, Really cool features, like, I mean, for the price, you can't go wrong. It's, uh, GPS is, for, for what you pay for, it does a lot. If the uh, remote, let's say you're flying, and you shut this remote off, it'll automatically enter return to home. So obviously, if the battery's dying in the remote, it'll return to home. If it gets, if any time where it loses a signal from the transmitter, it'll return to home on its own um, to reduce the risk of losing it. And then obviously having it fly into something or someone and cause injury or property damage. The other, uh, cool thing for the battery, um, the battery's dying. It know it has a smart battery system to where if it knows, I don't know what percentage, but let's say 10%, let's say it's at 10% and the drone knows it, it's a little far from home and 10% you're getting, uh, running a risk of not being able to land it before it dies. It, it then will enter automatic return to home at that point as well. The controller will, uh, the GPS light will start flashing when it's in return home and it'll start beeping. Um, that's how you know that you'll know you're in return to home when it starts doing that as well. And you won't have any control over it unless you flip back into normal mode. Then you can regain control of it. The speed function, you have to be careful with as well. Um, Forgive me if I'm wrong. I know I'm in the right ballpark. Uh, I just don't have the manual in front of me. I think speed one, which is uh, A, or I'm sorry, E, that is, I think, 25 mile an hour. You flip it in the middle to D, that is 35 mile an hour, and S is 45 or 44 mile an hour. And then I, did, I do know the manual said 44.7 miles per hour for max speed. On a windless day, it, it'll go every bit of that. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a couple days ago I flew when there was almost no wind and that thing, I mean, it would get away from me really quick. And then if you have it in, in GPS mode, as soon as you let go, it'll stop right in its tracks and hover uh, rather quickly. This also affects vertical takeoff and vertical um, descent, or vertical ascent and vertical uh, descent speed. So if you have it here and you uh, go to climb, it'll climb still quickly, but uh, obviously if you move it up and you do this, it'll shoot right up to the sky extremely fast. So then again, be careful with power lines and things like that. Also, when this is flipped up and you have GPS on, it will uh, correct itself a lot quicker too. Uh, and you have to be careful. It's little movements will be, it'll almost overcorrect itself. So if you have GPS on, I would always just try to get used to keeping this down unless there's high wind or you're trying to do something where you want to move fast. This toggle switch is for uh, calibration to find the zero point and full access of both uh, joysticks. Pretty much, uh, I haven't had to calibrate that yet, but if you ever had to, there's instructions to enter calibration mode and you have to move these around and do a couple things, but always just leave that in the okay position. This toggle switch is for the camera to move it up and down. Uh, to tilt it, you can go completely uh, 90 degrees down from horizontal, or you can uh, bring it up slightly higher to almost uh, right there. But the problem is with that, you're gonna see these blades spinning a good, uh, tip I guess is to tilt this down just about 30 degrees maybe 25 degrees or so that way when you move forward when you're moving forward you're not running you're not having the camera pick up the blades and you can make a better uh, looking video that way 
So all in all, a good review. I mean, I've flown it. I'm gonna po post the video here rather quickly of uh, some shots I took with it uh, from the air. And just for a, low, a medium grade drone, it's definitely not a toy, but it's not a uh, super professional one either. But for the price, I don't think you can go wrong. It's uh, extremely powerful. It, it, it's heavy, it cuts through the wind really well. And uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. And kids love watching me play it and, or play with it and um, you could probably have some good uses for it as far as uh, real estate if you're in law enforcement you can uh, use it to carry around as a even if it, you want to consider it a throwaway drone since it's not super expensive you can carry it around and if you have a if law enforcement needs to track a suspect that fled on foot um, <clears throat> get aerial video of a uh, property for whatever reason uh, there's there's a magnitude of things you can do with it but uh it serves multiple purposes but just for taking some cool air video and it'll also take uh screen sh or um snapshots as well from the air and you can do it in burst mode take some really cool pictures which is like i said goes up to 16 megapixel so let me know if you have any questions great drone i give it a thumbs up um for the price i give it a 10 out of 10 i haven't seen one issue with it that i don't like everything works as described the gimbal it's flawless, it's very smooth. Um, even when you're jerking back and forth fast, moving up and down fast, it just adjusts itself properly as it should. Haven't had any flaws. Uh, one thing before I, <clears throat> before I leave here, is I did notice uh, that it was kind of doing this last week. And I thought maybe the uh, gimbal was uh, defective. But when I looked, the camera wasn't fully seated in here. So for, I don't know why, but for some reason, it, it detected that and it wasn't correcting itself like it should. So the camera was just crooked. I put it in there crooked. So I see, I seated it correctly and it was fine after that. So once again, if you have any questions, um, if you guys want me to do a video on uh, as far as how to calibrate everything, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.